The satellite capsule, called Pilgrim, is currently en route to Earth's orbit carrying soil samples from Mars for extraterrestrial life research. The International Space Station crew has prepared to capture it to retrieve the samples, with Rory assigned to the station's exterior. After some waiting and monitoring, an accident occurs. Uh, please, Rory, move. Rory is fine, and the entire crew cheers for successfully retrieving the Pilgrim. They then proceed to the lab where paralyzed astrobiologist Hugh manages to discover single cells, almost fossilized organisms within the soil. He tries various methods to revive the organism, including simulating the protozoa Earth atmosphere and adding growth mediums such as glucose. Did it just move? This astounding discovery is broadcasted live by news outlets on Earth, showcasing each crew member's work to be studied by children, even how they go to the bathroom. Alongside this groundbreaking news, representatives from certain honored schools involved name the organism Calvin. Some time later, Dr. Miranda checks David's health, expressing concerns as David has been on the station for 473 days. As a former military soldier, David insists that he prefers being in space, where people don't hurt each other, disregarding his slowly weakening physical condition. The next day, Hugh discovers that Calvin has grown rapidly, consisting of trillions of identical cooperative cells, each capable of performing its own somatic function. In other words, each cell simultaneously acts as muscle, nerve, and photoreceptive cells, which Dr. Miranda describes as Calvin being the brain, muscle, and eyes all at once. While the crew is gathering, engineer Sho enthusiastically accompanies his wife giving birth via video call and meets his newborn child. They congratulate him, and Commander Cat offers him a storybook so he can spend time with his new child. Shortly after, Hugh is amazed to find Calvin now has a body that allows it to crawl and hug. A few weeks later, Rory rushes into the lab to repair the damage after hearing a malfunction alarm suddenly go off. Miranda doesn't understand how it could happen, but then Hugh admits it was his fault. Angry, Miranda immediately reminds him to be more careful, as they don't know what they're dealing with. In the following weeks, Calvin showed no activity at all, which they thought might be hibernating as a defense due to changes in air pressure in the box. This puts the crew on edge, but Miranda admits relief since Calvin had grown too fast. While Calvin is inactive, the crew uses the opportunity to reinforce security in order that the box and lab must remain sealed at all times. Later, Hugh, realizing his mistake, argued that Calvin might be able to cure an incurable disease. When they reach an agreement, Hugh decides to repair Calvin with very low-voltage electrical stimulation in the hope of waking it up. He succeeded, but now Calvin had a very tight grip on his arm, restricting his movement, and he was trapped. He used all his strength to get his hand out of the box, but in vain. The crew started to panic and suggested they go into the lab to help him, but Miranda strictly forbade them to avoid dangerous risks that could harm them at any time. In fact, Calvin's grip gets stronger to the point of injuring Hugh's right hand, who immediately loses consciousness as Calvin lets him go. Then the evil creature uses an electric wand to punch a hole in the glove, allowing it to escape from the box. It immediately chased the laboratory mouse and brutally sucked it until it disappeared in just a matter of seconds. Realizing Hugh is in danger, Rory forces his way into the lab to retrieve Hugh's body, giving him to the crew. But Calvin quickly jumps at Rory's feet so the crew has to lock him inside. Okay. Suggestions? Then he tried to burn Calvin with an oxygen candle, but it immediately jumped and hid behind a box. Furious, Rory immediately grabs the incinerator after getting permission to kill it and begins chasing the alien around the lab. He managed to burn it on several occasions but it turned out to be quite resistant to the heat of the fire and continued to move nimbly. When Rory ran out of fuel, Calvin suddenly jumped on his face and entered his mouth, torturing him from the inside until he kept vomiting blood. The panicked crew urged each other to open the door, but the protocol blocked them for their own safety. Rory understands this situation very well, so he is forced to face his suffering alone until he meets his death and the threats continue. When the incinerator approaches a fire alarm, pressure gas is triggered and fills the lab. Then Calvin uses the opportunity to come out of Rory in a bigger form. The crew rushes to close all the gas valves. Unfortunately, Calvin manages to get in as the last hole is closed so now it could be anywhere. In the meantime, they decide to wrap Rory's body and plan to reimpose quarantine. 
Kat proceeds to send a distress call to NASA and manages to relay part of the message before their communications are lost due to a damaged transmitter. Kat rushes to the transmitter to make repairs and finds out it's overheating. When she opens the coolant chamber, the alien jumps out and latches onto Kat, trying to get into her suit. She immediately closed the coolant valve again and asked David to meet her at the airlock as she found liquid in her suit because Calvin broke her coolant tube. David was ready to open the door, but the liquid became more and more, and Kat drowned in her suit. They then together turn the door valve as Calvin continues to crawl over Kat looking for a way to get into the suit. Here, Kat suddenly changes her mind and decides to take Calvin along with her when she runs out of breath. Her death left the crew deeply saddened, but unfortunately Calvin jumped back onto the station just as her body left. Calvin has an astonishing ability to survive in the vacuum of space and temperature, but Hugh knows that it can't survive much longer without oxygen, so all they need to do is keep it outside the station. Since the thrusters are another way Calvin can get in, Sho has to turn them on one by one in hopes of blowing it up. Unfortunately, all that thrusting causes the station to turn and almost reach the atmosphere, forcing them to use the remaining fuel to return the station to orbit, allowing Calvin to re-enter. Hugh puts forward the theory that these creatures once dominated Mars for hundreds of millions of years, but they went into hibernation due to the loss of atmosphere. So now he plans to simulate the same thing to force Calvin into inactivity, and the crew agrees. They then lock themselves in capsules before removing all the oxygen throughout the station. At that moment, Hugh was startled by something flashing, and he started to look unwell. They continue to wait while sharing their grief over the loss of their friend, with Hugh blaming himself for what happened. But David denies it because taking Calvin was a risky decision, and they knew that from the start. Hugh explains that Calvin is just trying to survive, and to do that it has to eat. Then they panicked when Hugh suddenly lost consciousness with his vital signs dropping, so they immediately used a defibrillator to stabilize him. Miranda was curious to see something moving at Hugh's feet, so she opened his suit and quickly backed away when she saw Calvin eating his feet. Miranda tries to use a defibrillator to shock Calvin, but it only angers it and reveals how massive its form has become. They immediately leave, but Sho chooses to split up and hide in a sleeping pod right before Calvin can catch him. The alien tries to destroy the pod, but it quickly leaves because it is too strong. Meanwhile, David and Miranda return to Hugh, who asks them to lift him up so he can experience floating one last time. Instantly, Hugh lost his life, leaving them in mourning. Then they see Calvin's movements on a monitor that accidentally swallows Hugh's tracker, motivating them to quickly come up with a plan. When it was devouring Hugh's body, they immediately locked it inside and then emptied the oxygen from the room. The computer suddenly announces that the shuttle is approaching the station, but the shuttle doesn't contact them until it successfully docks without approval. Miranda reveals that this is the final firewall, meaning they came not to save, but rather to push them into deep space so Calvin can't reach Earth. Sho, who also knew about the shuttle's arrival and thought it was a rescue, immediately headed to the docking area by leaving the hatch open. David and Miranda hurriedly went to warn him, but they were too late. Calvin, who was following him from behind, immediately preyed on the team that had just arrived when the docking port started to open, forcing the shuttle to detach itself from the station. Sho tried to escape from the Predator by grabbing Miranda's hand, but then Calvin managed to climb his legs so he sacrificed himself while carrying Calvin, but failed. Sho couldn't be saved and Calvin goes back inside. When Calvin tried to attack Miranda, she electrocuted it until it was thrown, and then they hurriedly closed all the hatches. Then they looked out the window, only to find destroyed stations crashing into each other. David then checks the computer and finds out they have lost life support. Plus the temperature and oxygen are dropping rapidly. He also explains that all this chaos has pushed the station towards Earth, and they only have about 39 minutes before entering the atmosphere. In this moment of desperation, David reveals his plan to take Calvin into space with him on a lifeboat and allow Miranda to return to Earth safely. Miranda is reluctant, but David reminds her that he is a pilot and never wants to return to Earth. After they reached an agreement, David started moving to lure Calvin with an oxygen candle, and Calvin immediately appeared to follow him. As soon as he gets into the lifeboat, Calvin jumps at him, but David manages to distract it with a candle. Then he launched, and Miranda immediately scrambled to reach the other lifeboat. The pod immediately detaches from the station and moves away, but debris hits them both, causing them to begin malfunctioning. While Miranda struggled with control, David tried hard to keep the lifeboat on path, but Calvin had a grip on both hands so he couldn't move. 
Nevertheless, their efforts went according to plan, where one of them flew into deep space, while the other landed in the middle of the ocean. A fishing boat immediately arrives to help, but when they open it, it is revealed that David has reached Earth and Miranda is lost in space. This means that billions of lives are in danger with Calvin's arrival.